This is Jonathan Lane from Fan Film Factor, and today we're having some technical difficulties that are preventing us from doing a video interview. So we're going old school today. We're going audio with Mr. Samuel Cockings, the Casanova of CGI, and his lovely better half. We actually get the beautiful Marie-Louise Swalling. Is that how the last name is pronounced? Swalling. What, what is that from in terms of uh, nationalities? It comes from Norway. All right. So you just sort of swam over, you know, to, uh, to Great Britain <laughs> yeah. at some point. It's not too far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I am here too. Hello. Yes, yes Sam is here too. <laughs> Hello, Sam. We're on radio. That's exciting. <laughs> radio. You guys are, uh, I guess, the, the the current power couple of the UK. And, uh, of course, when I say power couple, I mean power 543. Oh, uh, yes. Is, uh, yes, Sam's uh, YouTube sense. channel. Yes, but that's what I was trying to think. Does, does Leo have a better half? Does, you know, I don't know. Does Greg? I mean, yeah, Greg, but she's a nurse. Yes, Greg Locke is married. Leo Tierney. Yeah. I don't know about Leo. Yeah. Uh, I'm still... Well, yeah. I'm still waiting to hear back from him because I'd like to interview him about his latest <laughs> Deception 3. But today we are going to be yes. telling Sam and Marie about one of Sam's latest Trek shorts. The latest, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Oh, and, mm -hmm. and, and a really fun one, by the way. If you haven't watched it yet, you really should. It's it's one of his one of his best efforts so far, I think. It's called Cerritos yeah. Lost. It's definitely uh, for for fun factor. It's one of my favorites, I think. It just kind of came together. Uh, oh, that worked. Yeah. That worked. <laughs> It really did. It was it was fun the way that a good episode of Lower Decks is fun. You know, you've done drama, you've done action adventure, you've done contemplative, you've done time travel, and 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 this one just had a wonderful whimsy to it. And and I have to credit somebody who's not here with us right now, which is uh, the person is Nick Cook of Dundee, Scotland, who plays two characters in this. His typical Daniel Hunter character from intrepid but also he plays grathar the evil ai and i don't know what marie thinks about nick's portrayal but i think that ai voice that he has is, is absolutely awesome what, what did you guys think i like nick i think he's always really good <laughs> he's very i don't know he can play a lot of different things he's quite diverse i guess yeah he's a surprisingly good actor for somebody mm -hmm. who's not necessarily an actor uh he you know one of the the things I like about Star Trek fan films is that when, when people have these hidden talents, they often can come out of hiding for the uh, the stuff. Which, by the way, includes you, Marie. You okay. are a wonderful actress. I, I love seeing you on camera, <laughs> finally. So let me just tell you guys, Marie's done a few fan films of Sam so far, but she's always, up until this point, been a sort of disembodied voice, the, the <laughs> interviewer. Um, how did your boyfriend, are you, are you guys like official yet? Is it boyfriend, girlfriend? Are you yet? <laughs> official <or what>? yet. <laughs> Eight years of official. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> That's just what I said. <laughs> Do you have any question you want to ask her right now? No, maybe. Well, what's the thing you say in trial? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> All righty. So Marie has finally been talked into by, by her other half appearing on screen. So how was that? How was it to finally take the plunge and put your, your beautiful face in front of the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it was scary a bit. It's not something that I would naturally go for, to be honest, but it's not, I'm not on screen that long, mm. so it didn't feel too scary and there wasn't a bunch of other people in the room. It was just Sam. So it's not too, too difficult. You sort of forget. And now it's on the internet. <laughs> and you had said, and you had said no probably about half a dozen times exactly. already. So yeah. this was, this was the final, this, this was the first yes. This was a fine, I'll do it. <laughs> yes. It was a special case. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was really fun to do, to be fair. And it was a good um, time, I think, to get involved as well. So. And incredibly of the moment. Yes, exactly. I mean, when did we write the script? Because you get because you get story credit. It was actually storied by us. The first the first non me story credit. What was it? The day before? The night before? Night before. Yep. You wrote it. Yep. While I was reading a book. Yep. And then we, we filmed it. it the next day. Yep. <laughs> and it was out it within was two crazy. weeks. Absolutely crazy. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. But we had to we had to try and save lower decks, so we 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 jumped. 
And as you might remember, Jonathan, many a time the, the wonderful Nimran has accidentally not been at a shoot that she is booked <laughs> at, um, and that has, that has caused at least, at this point, seven bonus short films because her absence, other actors have been locked in with the budget therefore spent, so we've had to use the time to do something else. Uh, Nim was also booked that weekend <laughs> to film with us. <laughs> yeah. um, with her boyfriend, in fact, we were finally getting him in a piece because he has had some secret interest for apparently a year or two and finally talked himself into a piece um, and then she got ill. So we're like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll just relax this weekend instead. Oh, wait, load has got cancelled. Well, <laughs> oh dear. I guess we did that again. Mm. Yeah, and I, I remember Nick saying um, as soon as he heard the, the, the cancellation, his brain was like, is Sam going to text me? Am I going to be called it again? <laughs> yes, yes, he was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, for those guys who don't know, I got I got to bring in a little bit of uh, yeah. outside information here for those who kind of wonder what we're talking about. So first of all, Nim is Nim Ronson, who plays Anna Keeley in a number of different Trek shorts, and she's traveling down to Sam quite frequently to do those. And then, of course, what Nick was referring to is when the announcement that Prodigy had gotten canceled, Sam leapt into activity and and put together in just a matter of I, I think we can actually use the word hours yeah uh, six and a half days yeah six and a half days of yes. um, yep. the uh the flight of the well actually no it was was it the flight of the protostar or was yeah, i think that's the right one yeah the first ever prodigy fan film you know not to single-handedly say prodigy but to say you know hey look the fans love the show so much here's a fan film of prodigy please don't cancel it now, I think in the case of Lower Decks, I mean, I, I, I hate to be the the bearer of bad tidings here, but there's a very big difference between being canceled after one season. And then, of course, Prodigy was brought back. Its second season having already been sort of made, it was given over to Netflix and it will be deb debuting next month. Finally, mm -hmm. the second season. And Lower Decks, which honestly, it ran its course. It was only ever supposed to be five years. Most development contracts for streaming series at this point are five-year contracts, if that. And it's just that the whole world of streaming has sort of not materialized as much as the studios had hoped. There were all these predictions of, you know, this will replace network television completely, and this is our new money-making endeavor, and everybody's going to be coming to our particular streaming service, so we have to have one. And of course, you know, every battle plan only lasts until the engagement with the enemy. In this case, the enemy is reality. The enemy is money, people streaming. I mean, we, we streamed during the COVID lockdown, but then inflation started happening around the world and people were like, okay, I don't, do I really need Paramount Plus? Do I really need these other things? And, and suddenly the, the influx of capital for streaming development just went out the window and then of course now paramount is selling itself so everything is in flux and you know why, why i would love to see another season of lower decks uh, i'd love to see lower decks going on and on until my grandchildren could watch it. i think it should be the first 10 season star trek that's my opinion <laughs> yeah i'm not sure we're gonna get any 10 season star trek sam <laughs> i'm just saying it's a I great show saying. anyway and i made a film <laughs> Fingers are crossed. I just, I'm, I'm not sure that, that Cerritos Lost is going to have the same impact yeah. as, as Flight of the Protostar, I'm sorry to say. But that being said, it was still a wonderful fan film, and it was a lot of fun to watch. Marie, I want to ask you a few more questions, um, because mm -hmm. I, I've interviewed Sam six ways till Sunday, and in fact, it is Sunday <laughs> morning here. It is 8.16 for me, but it's 4.16 in the afternoon for you. I'm in a bathrobe. You guys have had your entire day behind you now in, in Great Britain. Yeah. And um, so I want to ask you some questions. I don't usually get to, you know, ask people other than Sam questions. So <laughs> um, I want to I want to ask you about Sam and I want to ask you about you and Sam, because at some point you guys got together. When you first got together with Sam, did you know about this life that he lives <laughs> in the future <laughs> goodness um i know you did have done a couple and i know that you were working on potentially a another one okay and it has spiraled since then to be honest now you've got you, loads you, released and loads in the works and you're in loads and so, now i'm stuck 
so so you <laughs> you you've been basically on this plane during the liftoff, and now Pretty and much. now you're stuck because the only way out is a parachute, and you don't have one, right? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but there was trek yards from well before, so you knew that that my, was part of my work. My job was this fandom side. Oh yeah, definitely. so that was always yeah. or that was not weird at, in the start. Um, no, I don't now, know when I would have you... brought up Tim Promley because that was that was obviously way before. That was a long time ago now. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Marie, are you are you at all a sci-fi or Star Trek fan, or have you also been drag kicking and screaming into that aspect of, of Sam's um... life? I like sci-fi and sci-fi fantasy, all that sort of stuff. I hadn't really watched Star Trek before. I finished TOS and watching the films. I've watched random episodes of stuff that Sam's shown I me. I love Low Decks, actually. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So I've watched bits of Low Decks, <laughs> bits of Discovery, a bit of Picard, a bit of Prodigy, um, bits and pieces of other places as well, but not you love flying through all the episodes. Oh, yeah, I do like Battle Star, yeah. Yeah, Battle Star's more, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at, at least you don't loathe it. Um, it's not that my wife loathes Star Trek, but she doesn't really watch, you know, any <laughs> episodes at all. She doesn't have any issues with the fact that I pretty much monopolized our son and turned him into a Trekkie. So, uh, <laughs> good man. She's okay with that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, mommy. Mommy's not going to really be uh, be doing a lot of Star Trekking with us. In fact, the last two episodes of Discovery, she happened to be sort of puttering around while they were on. And I believe at one point she had caught a scene that was particularly badly acted. She's like, really, that is some of the worst acting I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so Wendy's hated Discovery with only like, you know, 30 or 45 seconds of viewing. So that, that kind of says something. Uh <laughs> And so I just looked at dates for, for my own interest. I had not yet released Temporal Anomaly yet when we got together. So I was, I was, I was like, I've got this thing I've been doing for half a, you know, a decade. So that was, that was wow. going to come out. And therefore then, then, so that was like the end of it. Then the long pause and then obviously convergence and such. But so you were at the tail end of that. So you got mm. to appreciate that when it came out of me. It's like, oh my God. I think my dad's Roman dig when I was like, it's coming out this week. Ah. And you're like, that's nice. Yes, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. It's so actually kind of a very good time. Oh, yeah. Now, my understanding is that, Marie, you live somewhere different than Sam. Sam is, where are you, Sam? Tell people in Britain. Oh, uh, Bedford. So you are in Bedford, in Bedfordshire. Yes. And Marie, where are you in Great Britain? Um, so I live in Kent, which is sort of the southeast, nearish to London. So you guys just see each other on weekends. Is that how it works for the most part? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sam goes to you by train or you go to him by train? Yeah. Well, I drive, so. <laughs> oh, you drive? Yeah. Do you drive it's at all, not... Sam? Do you, you No. <laughs> no, no. Do you know how to drive? No, no, no. I think I'll be terrible. So I've never got around to no, it. No, you'll be fine. Yeah. You can do it. Probably. At some, at some point. At some point. Well, you have to learn to drive on the other side of the road. I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> we were there first, Jonathan. We were there first. <laughs> I don't know if you were there first. We had horses before you even existed as a country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is true. I have, I have an old girlfriend of mine uh, who was born in the UK and ultimately moved to America when she was five, had an interesting saying about the difference between Europeans and Americans. She said that, that Europeans think 150 miles is a long distance uh -huh. and uh, Americans think 150 years is a long time. Uh -huh. It's um, good saying. You know, we all laugh at each other for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, and my brother actually has a very good friend out here whose parents are uh, from London and they relocated. And I remember when um, when the mom first started draw driving and she she did not want to drive on an L.A. freeway. I totally understand mm -hmm. that. But, you know, her her first six months were just pretty much reminding herself every moment of every day. We drive on the right side now, not on the left. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to risk her children's lives uh, until until she actually like learned that, uh, <laughs> which I appreciate. So I, I would be the same way in, in Great Britain. I'm sure if I started driving there, I'd just be like, what are you people doing? You're all going the wrong way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so back to you, Marie. So um, have you ever done any acting before? I mean, you're a little, you're a little shy, you say, but have you done any training for it have you ever been in any school plays or anything like that 
I mean, I haven't been in a school play since primary school, so that's like uh, six years old to about 11, but not really since then. It's not really my I'm probably never the thing. lead either. No, I used to be the lead all oh. the time in primary school. Oh. And then secondary oh. school and you get a bit awkward and it's like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and now Sam's putting you back in front of the camera. That one time, I got it's, it. This one time, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to see you. You never again. know. Oh. <laughs> most okay. lovely, most lovely compliment was uh, Emma saying, "So when do I get to work with with Marie?" Oh dear. <laughs> Which is lovely. We can't say no to Emma. She is lovely. Emma, Emma is Emma Thorne, and she plays Laura Reed. Yes, and, uh, she's awesome as well. But yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be fun to to just have Emma in a scene with you to? Just bring out all of that wonderful inner actress. Mm. Yeah, especially as Marie's like 800 years old and Emma really isn't. So there's a bit of a difference in, yeah, in life experience. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by 800 years old? Well, Marie, you're, you're, a, you're an alien. That's a whole big thing. Yeah, Marie's a lanthanite, so she's one of the Stranger oh. Worlds aliens. Oh, that's right. That, you know what? I, I heard the word lanthanite. I was like, where have I heard that before? It's like, oh, yeah. Now I, now I remember that. That's why Marie looks and sounds identical in a TOS film and a late TNG film and a low Dexo film because she does not age. And that was one of her provisos for ever doing anything. I'm not going to change my voice. Nope. You're not getting, it's always just been me. It's like, okay, well, then you can't age. Okay. <laughs> and then literally we're doing our first film and then Stranger Worlds invented Lanthanite. I was like, ooh, I'm going to nick that. And then she was. Yeah. I love how it started as a joke. I was like, I'm going to live forever. Yep. And now you can be in every single film. <laughs> oh, dear. What did I do? But, but I love, I love what the... What did you do? And this is, this is Marie doing it. She made that criterion, right? That's the... so this, is, this is tremendous. But it's nice to... you can to... age, though. You, I mean, you know, another... I got dear things, fine. What's lovely is that it means that as a character, that Marie's character, Dr. Louise Nielsen, has been in every single person's life for their entire lives. So everyone in the cast knows them, at least as a famous, mm. as a like, like knowing David Attenborough, right? The world just knows him. Well, I've met him, they know him. So any character like, oh my God, it's you. Or like, oh, I've watched you before. Or I've met you three or four times when you've interviewed me. So it's a very unique thing you've created by accidentally insisting to live forever. You're like, because she's the most famous person in all Trek shorts, definitionally. So, you know, congrats on that. Do it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the fun subtexts of Cerritos Lost is that, and I think it's a phenomenal job in the acting, is that while this hasn't exactly happened to you before, similar has. So you approach like, okay, it's this again. And it comes across beautifully. There's why there's a lack of tension, because you're like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get past it, it's fine. Uh, 30 years ago I got stolen, 50 years ago, it just, just happens sometimes. And you did it, it's, it's great, it was a good context. Yeah. Oh yeah, the stories you'll have to tell your grandchildren about, you know, and your grandpa and I first started getting together. We'd only done like, you know, two or three fan films. It wasn't, you know, we hadn't we hadn't topped a thousand yet. <laughs> oh, back, back then we used to do enough fan films, few enough that you guys could have watched them all. But uh, <laughs> yeah. now you won't yeah. be able to watch them in your lifetime because you don't have enough years left, because that's uh goodness. Scary. It sounds like you though. <laughs> Does it? Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Every day, oh, I could do this. I've got another idea. Not my fault. Yeah, what is it like being with Sam? <laughs> I mean, I, I only see Sam from a distance, but you know, I definitely, you know, see the ADHD of the way his, his mind works. It's, oh, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. Uh, how is it being his uh his significant other and seeing all this? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you do it, how he does it. It's I mean, he does everything himself. He does the script part himself. He does the cameras himself. He does the directing himself. And it's honestly, I could never. It's fascinating to watch it, to be honest. <laughs> He's all over the place, but it's so controlled at the same time. It's yeah. Because Marie has been a helper in lots of shoots. Yes. I mean, you've you've seen solo days with Nick and with Nim and with Emma, and you know you've been there. She's a very good um, script supervisor. Yes, thank you. Very very good at keeping <laughs> us on track. Um, so you've seen everyone act. That's why everyone knows you. Because you've seen we work with everyone just not on or in a scene so what does that look like by the way so when you're sort of just helping out as script advisor or what have you what are what are you doing during a typical shoot um so i'll run lines with people like off the camera and then um when they're like a single person is filming their bit i will play the other part so they've got someone to um act off of i guess 
in your make sure chair. you remind you to not go too far off on a tangent and don't forget to do this bit of the yep. script or and everyone goes home and he goes oh we missed this part but I try to make sure you don't do that I mean, mercy doesn't happen but the, the the big thing that was a that was a whole thing you were super essential on that keeping a few things um because that was ridiculous which obviously people learn about eventually but that was a that was a whole thing but yeah mm. helping hand very helpful so what typically happens when you guys get together? Do you know going in, oh, this is going to be a big weekend and um, I, I'm not going to really have access to Sam because he's going to be behind the camera? Uh, or or do you get there and like, okay, Sam, what are we doing this weekend? And then Sam says, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> no, I do know in advance. So <laughs> I volunteer my time rather than, oh, if you're doing that, I'm not coming. <laughs> We're probably only at maybe twenty percent of shoots. Yeah, we well, I'm I can only do it at the weekends because I've got um, a weekday job. But and you need time off as well, so it's not an obligation. It's a case of I mean, you just want to see the people sometimes. Well, exactly. Yeah, I like um, all of the cast. They're all really nice as people, so it's nice to see them and chat with them. And it's so very it's... interesting to watch them all. The difference between how their character is and how they are personally. It's it's fun. It's a fun time. So it's more if you've got a really big shoot, which are kind of rare because they, they cost more to do. Yes. There's like, would you, would you like to come and, and help and be in, you know, see Emma and see Nim and, mm -hmm. and you know, have the pizza <laughs> that we're all going to have? Have yeah, the pizza. <laughs> but most of our shoots are, are one day shoots because it's in budget and I try and make as many weekday as possible, which is easy to schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and if it has to be a two day, a hotel are just half as expensive because that's always the biggest money suck is just that's non-negotiable. It's like, cool great yeah <laughs> you know and marie what is your regular job by the way what are you escaping from when you come to visit oh, yeah um i work in um quality for a medicine um wholesaler working quality so you have to take the medicine and make sure it's okay <laughs> that'd be called guinea pig <laughs> no not quite <laughs> i make sure everything's like good to go it's not um it's like looking after patient safety and making sure everything's okay for patients and you're the final check and balance. Yeah, kind of. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. You literally hold people's lives in your hand. No no pressure there. Mm. A little bit of pressure. Mm. <laughs> but I'm only I'm only learning it, so <laughs> it's no, but it's good. It's I like it. Well, cool. Now, Sam, I'm sure that you have some more Trek shorts in development. Um I've heard rumors. You could say say that Sam has Trek shorts in development is, is sort of like saying the sun is going to rise tomorrow um, and, and yep. you know, even even behind the clouds of Great Britain. Wow, uh, wow my drink is wet. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so what is coming up in the world of the Trek shorts? Well, assumingly just been released is some uh, GoFundMe bonus films involving the wonderful Nim as a first ever de-aged uh, 18 year old cadet Keely at Starfleet Academy and that was really fun to write uh, even younger than young <laughs> we've already done the young Keely storyline but had to go younger turns out very easily and very differently uh, and that's going to help us keep going through the summer um, in terms of Marie we have two films that you've you've shot uh, as Nilsson we have uh, it's funny that the, we have the film that was going to be the, the official next film last year and then Prodigy got cancelled involved then the Prodigy film came out and then everything got moved because of that um, and that was going to be our next in the Stargate crossover batch um, which we've already had the Emma Stargate crossover that was the Nim Stargate crossover and there's the Marcus and Nim Stargate crossover <laughs> so that that's all various things that and that was that was fully shot that was pretty much edited and, and really did a tremendous job with the voiceover for that thank you um, and that was fun because the Nim's character in it gets really aggressive and we kind of fourth wall broke a little bit, and that was fun to have you act the other side of that um, because that's you know it is tense, and that was fun to kind of kind of play. Um, I remember pitching that you pitching that to you when we were walking back from a park, and you were like, "Oh no, I don't want to be mean to Nim." I'm like you're not being mean, you're being strong because she's being mean to you, but she's not. But she, that was a you're like, "Oh no," um, and then the other one is a Red Dwarf crossover, um, which is a specific idea for a specific reason, and that's with Emma. Uh, and you and you did shoot that, sort of, but we had some technical problems, so I had to shoot part of it again. Uh, that's a really fun, silly script, as you can imagine. 
you write that script before or after the announcement that Red Red Dwarf is returning? Oh no, we shot this like like oh god, um, October last year, September last year, ages ago. Yeah, yeah, that was, ages ago. That was before. So you just uh, happen to get serendipity there with the the return of Red. I mean, Dwarf. I always assume it's going to come back, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's returned six times in twenty years. I always assume, and they always, you know, I've met the car several times, and they're always like, yes, absolutely, we'll want to do more. Um, and that's really really fun. Um, and that was meant to be again, a, you know, because I kind of go go with the wind a little bit. If if the if the Trek world changes, I've got to try to change with it a little bit, like the Lower Decks, like the Prodigy. Um, and then like, oops, we need to raise some more money. Oh darn! I gotta <laughs> gotta make something new to try and generate interest and do something special because I'm a silly sod, but also it's just nice to nice to show what we do, you know. Now I don't know when this interview is going to be out or whenever, but when are you planning on launching this next crowdfunding campaign? In the week of the June tenth, ideally June eleventh, because I've got a, I've got the giant Trek Yards <laughs> Discovery Day on the Monday. So this is tomorrow is the tenth. Filming this, yep. so hopefully Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I've got okay, all three films to finish. So you would definitely beat me out for this. Yes. <laughs> So yes, so folks, there there is a crowdfunder. I just add, out of curiosity, so yeah. I don't know yet. How much money are you trying to raise at, at this point? Yeah, you know, between three and four thousand pounds would be tremendous. Two would get me to a milestone, but not really much further. Three would be useful. Four would be very very helpful. So, you know, but obviously more is good, as is always these cases. Well, that is true. Now I know there's some other crowdfunding campaigns that are currently still trying to raise money, and some other ones that are coming out to just sort of give people a, a list of those. There's a combo Avalon Lost Neutral Zone Studios crowdfunder trying to raise money for the um, Yesterday's Enterprise. Like it's not a sequel, it'd be a prequel fan film that they're trying to reach. They're almost at their goal. I think they're at about like 2,500 or something of what they need, 3,500. So there's that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Farragut Forward is coming out with a new crowd funder and then of course sam will be holding his hand out as well it seems like the, the the days of all you have to do is put up a kickstarter and indiegogo and then just you know start counting the pennies are over so people have to really ask hat in hand the fans to get their money now so what are you planning on doing to get their attention and more specifically their generosity what i mean you're saying that but that hasn't been for 10 years since we could well, since they could get Trek actors, that was the only point that fan film into GoGo's and such were easy. So that hasn't been the case for none of the current creators have ever had that as part of their ability. Everyone after that, we all had to work very hard to try and get even some. I, I disagree. I think it's always been difficult. Um, I'm just of the sort that I spend, you know, a solid six full working days developing my Indigo campaigns. I get all cast interviews. I really go full full steam ahead because it shows the professionalism and the cool factor. So every single time I try and go above and beyond, and you you've seen me do behind the interviews knowing that the next Indiegogo mm -hmm. is, is around the corner, the big one to try and, you know, recoup and to keep going. Um, and, you know, as, as I always do, I pull out all the stops, I get all the cast, I get bonus things. Um, the GoFundMe's were essential last year because we had some things we had to cover. And this is to, again, do that, you know, the, the, the plaster versus the, the really helpful, but, you know, you can only fund so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I may, I may, I'm making three mini short films that are for people to enjoy. You know, can't get more goodwill than three new films with a fully de aged him, CG mm -hmm. costume, and a CG new environment. It's pretty, pretty special. So, you know, we earn it, we think. We try to, anyway. Yeah, you can't complain. Yeah. And, you know, you gotta, gotta put up a little bit of, uh, of cashola to help these humble fan filmmakers and Sam. Um, yeah. I mean, we released, what, nine films since the last crowdfunder? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's true. That's not my mind to work with. So. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm guessing Marie is not, you know, related to any like, you know, rich, rich, like, <laughs> no, unfortunately right? not. <laughs> no. we're, we're both hard workers. Yeah. Like we both worked all through pandemics. We just, we just, we just kept working, doing our bit. Yeah. Both the new Marie films, I think are rather good with the voiceovers. I think both are really good stories and um, with good acting that you kind of help elevate. Cause oh. you know, Nilsson knows, knows and sees things and can judge who's <laughs> interviewing. <laughs> Um, and in fact, it's funny, the film we were going to shoot with Nim and her, her boyfriend um, was actually going to end with the start of the interview from the Stargate crossover and have the same intro and end and have Marie's shoulder make a cameo 
Marie's shoulder was the plan. <laughs> um, her big big debut originally. Over the um, phone, yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, to actually see what the interview process was going to be like, which I thought was going to be really fun. And the, uh, I'll give it a mild spoiler because it's, you know, that's still way away. We're going to have a specific line that the memory alpha chose to edit out the documentary because <laughs> they felt it was inappropriate, but leave it in the real version of the film as a little, you know, just fun bonus narrative thread and see Nilsson's reaction to a line she didn't like, like, oh, like you can't be saying that, Keely. <laughs> We're going to just, you know, I thought that was a fun little um, tie into my own canon, as it were. There's some fun stuff in that one, too. Well, that is great. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff to look forward to when it comes to Sam. There's always fun stuff to look forward to when it comes to Sam. Uh, hey, Marie, I, I have to say that you definitely need some kind of special award for being <laughs> most patient and supportive, a significant other, because, you know, you, you didn't come into this saying, hey, I want to be part of your fan film, you know, like, unlike Sam's dad, who, you know, said, hey, put me in your fan film, you know, so every yep. time he, you know, Stephen gets, uh, <laughs> gets tagged, it's like, well, dad, you asked, you know, you, you Marie. You can't you complain, complain, you asked, <laughs> you yeah. know. Marie, it's just you're you're just per, per being dragged kicking and screaming into all of this, aren't you? <laughs> Not quite kicking and screaming, but um, yeah, it took a lot of convincing, I think, to get here. But yeah, it's been good and it's been fun doing the acting. So, and you were very good. Yeah. Like I you think were you were legitimately good. You. very good. <laughs> um, you've had several compliments from the cast just saying you just really nailed it. Whatever you were doing, whatever we got, that worked. I really think it did. Oh, good. So, so my last <laughs> question for you, Marie, is mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we all we all talk about our significant others, you know, to our friends, to our family or whatever. Um, how do you describe Sam when the people are like, well, tell me about your about your boyfriend or your beau? I don't know what they say. Uh, your what, what do they say in Great Britain for uh, for what you would call Sam? So no, boyfriend, I guess. OK, yeah. boyfriend. Is what yeah, I, I think like it's the same. Cool. Yeah cool word for it anyway but you know so 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 tell me about this guy you're dating for eight years uh what what how do you describe sam oh goodness um well he's very nice he's a good person um a bit of a geek i guess a or nerd. i don't know which I'm one's the right i don't know which you, one's the right go. one <laughs> um makes a lot of films on the internet but yeah a good guy oh <laughs> And then they get all curious, I'm sure. They say, he makes films on the internet? And then yeah. you say... Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even try to... No further questions, Your Honor. Star Trek ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't go there. It's Star Trek fan films. I'm gonna Although, I, remember, I remember one time you invited me to a party or get gathering, and you said one of your old school friends both knew me from Trek Yards... <laughs> And I'd seen my fan films, <laughs> yes. and so I walked into this get-together, get and he beelined for me, and we talked to the bar for like 45 minutes, and you were not happy about that, because he no, stole me. So you're one of your friend's group from old from school wasn't knew who I was very specifically. So that was quite nice. <laughs> Small yeah. world. It is weird when we're, like, lovely, obviously, because I always, like... It's happened recently, yeah. yeah. Um, when people bump into us in public, and it's a bit like, oh, hello. <laughs> um. But no, it's really nice when people come up to us as well and say hello, mostly to you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's nice. Yeah, we had that recently in a sci-fi store. Well, twice recently in sci-fi store. And you, you get the look of recognition. They come up to you say, hello, it's so nice to meet you. And, like, and this is Marie. She's in films too. She's like, oh, my God. The recent guy didn't know who you were. If he didn't know I made films. He, I mean, did you make one a few years ago? It's like, yeah, I made one a few years ago, and then all of the other ones. Yeah, all the other ones happened. <laughs> but the other guy, the other guy knew from him from the London one. He was like, "Oh my god, yeah, I think yeah. I've seen your it's voice." It's very surreal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've joked about getting Nim to a convention in costume and see who no recognizes her. <laughs> That's a great idea. I, I know she loves that idea. Just like in full Keely, it does take a while to be Keely, and it's not her she normally is, and just like see. She should get recognized. Oh, you should do that. I know she really wants to. <laughs> Actually, what you should really do is you should print some posters of, of Anna Keeley and then, you know, ha have her bring it. Not only really posters, like maybe just, you know, eight by tens or whatever, and then just have her bring it. <laughs> a little booth. You, you can make a little extra money just, you know, autograph. <laughs> oh, goodness. I mean, she, she'd love just to give them away, you know, and like just to say hello. I mean, she likes meeting people who appreciate her work. Um, she's very proud of her work. So, I mean, we all are, but she likes to, she finds it very fun. Hello, I'm famous on the internet. <laughs> You either hate me in one film or love me in this film. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. always love him. 
<laughs> and we love you too, Marie. You were awesome. I have to say once again, you know, I'm going to give you my applause for oh, thank doing you so this. much. <laughs> it was really a breakout performance. Fun. Breakout performances, but performances, you know, I mean, if we can see you in front of the camera again, that would be lovely. If it's just your, your disembodied voice, then, you know, well, we'll take what we can get. Because <laughs> you're still, still a very good narrator. And I still love the, the end of the pack of the documentary where I had you do a very soppy prodigy speech. I used twice, it was too good. <laughs> and it's just, it just really sweet and with a video, yeah, really, really nice. Because you like prodigy, you like lower deck. So of all things, they connect to the most. Yeah. I said to a TNG film, be like, I don't know these people. Who are these people? <laughs> but those <laughs> Who ones are these people. Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we do have to wrap up because, as it turns out, Marie does have to skedaddle back for. Uh, she has jury duty in the morning. Um, I discovered okay. that uh, they have juries in 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 the UK as well. Although, according to Sam, it's not very not very typical for a. Uh, a person in, in the UK to get called for jury duty. Not as It was a surprise to us all. <laughs> here in America. Um, but that's one of the reasons that we're on audio is that we didn't really have time to try to fix the video problems. We were rushing with the clock. So anyway, you get to hear Marie's voice, which I think is very typical anyway, because most of the time she's you know <laughs> talking as opposed to on camera. But uh, I want to thank you for squeezing me in here at what is uh, now 8.45 in the morning, my time in Los <laughs> Angeles. And just before five for you there in uh, in Great Britain, but uh, I do thank you again for your time and for gracing us Trekkies with your presence. I do <laughs> certainly appreciate that. Thank you for having us. The it's famous me. Dr. Louise Nelson. <laughs> famous! Yes. Memory Alpha. Go thank watch you. your documentaries. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Give money to Sam if you can, and uh, I, will, uh, I will put a link to his crowdfunder in the blog and then under the video so that you can uh clean up. thank you jonathan yes yep, thank you <laughs> all righty cheerio folks <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>